everyone, I am Alexa Dunn and today I am going to be talking about white room syndrome. This is my Achilles heel when it comes to drafting and writing. My prime weakness that I have had to work on really hard over the years to combat in my own writing. And white room syndrome is pretty much exactly what it sounds like. It's when you're writing and your characters might as well be in a white room because you have described nothing and given your readers nothing to hang on to in terms of where your characters are and what they are doing. It is bare bones writing. It is too much telling and not enough showing, which I'm sure is something that you have heard a lot. I'm not going to be digging into show don't tell on the whole because that is a whole other topic, but white room syndrome is definitely a key piece of that. So first of all, my number one tip, if you do do this or you suspect that you do it, is not to fight it. Don't fight your natural writing style when you are drafting, especially if you're just trying to accomplish writing a book for the first time. Don't beat yourself up if you do this. Write the way that you naturally write and get it done. White room syndrome can be fixed in revision and over time as you become a more seasoned and experienced writing and as you understand your own flaws in your writing and how to fix them. You can train yourself to write it properly the first time. Actively as I draft now that I am three books in and now on my fourth complete novel drafting and just many, many years of working on this because I had the same problem when I wrote fan fiction. I will consciously, as I am drafting, I might write a line and go, hmm, that's really basic. That's a little boring. Let's try it a different way right now while I'm in the chapter or the next sentence is gonna drop in the details. So I've just gotten better at recognizing when I'm doing it and fixing it along the way. But let's focus on fixing it and identifying it or identifying it and fixing it because you probably wanna do it in that order. So identifying it, you want to look for any situation, especially any case where characters are interacting with each other. I find this occurs a lot in dialogue scenes where you just have lots and lots of dialogue, lines and lines of dialogue with very few action tags or anything in between the dialogue that is showing the reader what the characters are doing as they're talking or where they are. Also, you can look for scenes, any scene, where a character is in a place, but the sense of place and what things really look like are all in your head. That's the big thing. Like, you as the writer, like, we have pictures in our minds. Like, we have a sense of what's going on and where people are and what things look like. But it's all up in here. And sometimes it just doesn't get on to the page. So... Fixing white room syndrome is translating kind of the image in your head and getting some of it, at least some of it, it doesn't have to be all of it because you don't want to go in the opposite direction and dump a bunch of purple descriptive prose onto the page because that doesn't help readers either. But you want to sprinkle in details and give the readers just enough that they can form their own mental picture and they don't feel like your characters and every scene in your book is taking place in a big white box. So focusing first on those pesky dialogue scenes, think about your action tags. Think about the natural flow of movement. Start with where your characters are. Have you given the reader a sense of place anytime that you're starting a conversation or jumping them into a conversation? Where are the characters? Have you described that place before? You don't have to describe things all the time. You can set things up earlier in your novel. The first time characters go to a place, you can describe it. And then your readers will have the shorthand of knowing, oh, they're in the library. I know what the library looks like. I have a sense of it. But you can pepper in contextual details so that they're always referencing back to the previous description. So. They're in the library. I know that it's dusty and it's old and there's a stained glass window in the corner. So maybe in the conversation, you reference the time of day and how the light is filtering through and they're picturing it because you've already taken them to the library before. And also you can use that sense of place to give your scene and your dialogue and your action tags more dynamic motion. In order to break up dialogue and make scenes more dynamic, I like to 
move my characters around, give them things to interact with and things to do. So it's not just two characters standing across from each other having a really long conversation. It's, you know, she picks up a book and she flips through the pages while she's talking or she feels uncomfortable so she kind of like edges to the left and her hip bumps into a table. Whatever details make sense to you, you want to pepper in those things to the scene and to the dialogue to make it feel more real, to constantly be drumming up an image in someone's head and also just breaking up the dialogue so it doesn't feel like info dumping, which is, a, I also did a video on info dumping and I mentioned white room syndrome in it because they do go hand in hand often that you don't want to go in the opposite direction and dump information all over your readers. But that is something that I like to do specific to dialogue. I picture in my head where people are and what they are actually doing as they're talking. And I sprinkle in those details into the action tags, uh, remembering that said is like your bread and butter action tag. It can be like, she said, comma, you know, rustling the papers in her hand so that she didn't have to look at him. Like you can pepper in those details. It's not always like she sighed or she whispered or she, you know, said dejectedly. You don't want to go overboard with adjectives or adverbs because then you get a bit purple. And then when it comes to describing places, just always think back to the five senses. When you're trying to add color and flavor, so to speak, to a place, to set up a sense of place. Think about who your character is and what kind of details that they would observe. What kind of person are they? And maybe what sense did they default to? Are they all about seeing things? Are they going to take in the whole room and make observations about the people and the details there? Um, could smell come into play? Do they have a sensitive sense of smell? Could you come up with like a pitch perfect description of what that room smells like? Like don't just say that it's musty, but you describe the smell of musty and maybe that leads to a taste reaction from your character because often when we get strong smells, it also has a taste reaction. Or is it touch? Is your, does your character run their fingers along the wall. I used that trick when I was describing a bit of the spaceship. I had her run her fingers along the wall and describe the make of the the wall as well as what it looked like and what the light was doing reflecting off of it so that I could establish a sense of place so that every other part in the novel I didn't have to describe what the corridors of the spaceship looked like. I had done it in the first place so in all subsequent instances the reader already had the picture in their head. The key with white room syndrome is just when you are going through your manuscript, when you're reading through it, or when you are tapping in a critique partner or beta reader to, to read through your book, you want to ask them to pinpoint or you yourself are looking to pinpoint any scenes that don't feel strongly anchored in a sense of place. Look for spots where your scene, that scene could be taking place anywhere. And that's where you want to work to anchor it in specificity. It's setting it in a specific place. It's mentioning movement. I love to make scenes more dynamic, starting a scene in one place and moving it to another place. That's anchoring it in a sense of place. It's giving your character something to react to, which aids in conflict, but also just makes it more interesting. You don't want to have two people sitting at a table having a conversation for 10 pages. That is boring. Give them something to do, give them somewhere to go, and always be anchoring the reader in the details of the place so that it doesn't feel blank. Just to give you another example of something from my own work and what I have done to combat white room syndrome. So I love parties. I've told you that in many videos, so this could be from any book. But my default in a party scene, because I do default kind of to telling, would be, you know, she walks into the room and she spots her friend across the room and she makes her way to her. And, you know, it would be very based in people, feelings, interactions, dialogue. To make things not seem white room syndrome-y, I have to always be checking myself. So she walks into the room. What's the temperature like? How does it feel? Is it muggy? Is her skin kind of sticky? Is there a smell on the air? Is that smell food? Um, is that because there are waiters passing hors d'oeuvres on plates? 
what are the hors d'oeuvres being passed on plates? And also, what does that say about the party and the setting? Because when you're doing description and combating white room syndrome, you were always establishing a sense of place which ties into world building. And because you were usually doing this through a POV character, you are also characterizing that character and what they notice. My characters tend to notice food probably because when I walk into a party, I'm always scoping out the food situation. And what does that say about me? I, I mean, I guess I like food, but who doesn't like free food and cute little sandwiches passed on trays? But my characters will notice those things or they'll notice um, the pitch of the sound in the party. You can describe, you know, is there a high pitched laugh from a lady across the room and who is that? Is it a low murmur? Is the music too loud? Can the character feel the bass of the music in her bones? Does, does that mean it's really, really loud? Is it too dark that they can hardly see anything or is it too bright? Are there like spotlights that she kind of has to squint? You can always think about all of the things that your character would observe in a place. Again, thinking about the five senses, but those are some of the things that I think of when I'm doing a party scene to give a, you know, a specific sense of place and what is going on. Whereas in a first pass, I might default, especially in the past to just, you know, she walks in, she sees a friend, she goes up to her friend, they start talking, but there's no context for anything that's going on around them. So that is kind of my super basic download on white room syndrome, what it is, how you might recognize it, and some tips for fixing it. I see white room syndrome a lot in newer writers, as well as some seasoned writers. There are certainly published books that you pick up and if that writer really defaults to telling and hasn't really worked on it, you can not get a sense of place from pen plenty of their scenes, but that doesn't mean that you shouldn't work on it if it is something that you do. Because I find that agents and editors tend to like really vivid and descriptive prose that has a sense of place. You, it is in your best interest to work on this if this is something that you do. And by the way, if you don't have a problem with this because you just describe everything, you might want to think about pulling back because there is such thing as too much description and such a sense of place that characters, action, and you know conflict and pacing get lost or get muddled. So always think about that balance. I hope I've sparked some, you know, thoughts and ideas in you. If you have any questions about white room syndrome, leave them down below or any other topics relating to writing and craft that you're curious about or you'd like to hear more about, get some tips, some tricks for fixing. So thank you for watching everyone. If you liked this video, please subscribe and don't forget to hit the notification bell to get a notification every time I post a new video. And happy writing everyone.